my name is Susanne Frank, and it's a pleasure to introduce Galina Babak and Eugene Ostashevsky. And we will talk about a journal of Ukrainian futurism, um, Nova Generatia, and um, Galina Babak will tell us a bit about the history of futurist journals in Ukraine. Thank you, Susie. It's a pleasure to be here today with you. Um, first, I have to say that um, the uh, journal New Generation or Nova Generacja in Ukrainian is uh, the first uh, periodical edition that Mikhail Semenko, who was uh, the uh, leader of Ukrainian futurism, was able to publish within the uh, Ukrainian state publishing house. The journal um, was published uh, in 19. Um, during 1927 uh, till 1930. But before, there were several attempts of uh, Ukrainian futurists and mainly of Mikhail Semenko to establish periodical uh, publication. But unfortunately, they were not successful. For example, in 1922, uh, Ukrainian futurists, they published uh, the journal Semafor o Maybutnia, Semafor into the Future. That same year, they published Katafalka Iskustva. And also there were several other collections, but none of them, they were periodicals. As for the history of uh, Ukrainian futurism, uh, so basically we counted from 1914, it appeared on the eve of the First uh, World War. So, futurism in Ukraine started quite early, not much later than um, in Russia, but it had a very interesting development. So, it was interrupted and then started again in um, 1922. If we start to look at this um, journal, maybe it is a bit... Um, strange to have on the cover of a Ukrainian journal an illustration by um, Oskar Schlemmer and one of his figurines from Riadic Ballet. And on the second um, page, we actually have something like manifest. So we can read here, we are for and we are against. And what we also can see we have Ukrainian and we have German. So a Bauhaus artist on the um, cover and then Ukrainian and German. So is it by chance or is it just internationalism or where does it come from? Yeah, I think uh, that was a pragmatic gesture using the avant-garde language. Yeah. Uh, so of course uh, that shows us uh, um, the place uh, where they imagined themselves, I would say, it, it's between uh, Bauhaus and all avant-gardist uh, mm, trends within uh, Europe. But on the other hand, and they cooperated close it, closely to the new left, uh, new leftist art. Basically, it's a journal uh, published at that time um, uh, in, uh, in Russian in Russia. Uh, so basically, interna internationalism was the main uh, aspect of uh, their activity. And uh, when we will follow the journal's agenda, we will find a lot of materials of all the constructivist, Dadaists, uh, avant-garde uh, representatives of uh, different um, other literatures and, and cultures. Yeah. So, for example, the uh, cooperated with Bauhaus in uh, Czechoslovakia, they cooperated with Karel Tage and they uh, published some essays on Karel, um, of Karel Tage in translation um, into Ukrainian. They also cooperated with a number of uh, German journals, uh, for example, uh, Das Kunstblatt or the um, uh, Sturm. Also, they um, published in translation using visual stuff of uh, Le Corbusier. So it was a journal about, um, basically, the main thing is uh, not the journal about literature. That is, uh, first of all, like political uh, journal about the uh, uh, policy of art in the, um, like the biggest concept, uh, as you can imagine. And it was aimed more on the uh, avant-garde manifestos. Uh, on uh, architecture, uh, film, visual stuff, I mean, uh, paintings, and only uh, the last um, a turn, uh, literature and poetry. The political significance of this, right, of, of this internationalism here, 
is the fact that the Ukrainian futurists are acting as complete free agents without any reference to the Russians. Is that correct? From my point of view, it's a very difficult question uh -huh. uh, uh, of uh, national, international, uh -huh. especially when we talk about avant-garde. Right, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> because avant-garde is like basically against yeah. national. Yeah. But now what uh, we are facing and what we are talking as we are talking about Ukrainian futurism or Ukrainian avant-garde, we stress the first word. So what does it mean Ukrainian or what does it mean being national uh, within like avant-gardist movements? And I think that this ten tension uh, within this movement was from the very beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, like it was love-hate relationship, I would say. So <laughs> I mean, between Ukrainian and Russian futurists, yeah. Because on the one hand, they cooperated closely, but at the same time, uh, they uh, discussed what is avant-garde, and they um, basically, uh, I'd say. Uh, compete, Semenko compete, for example, with Mayakovsky on the right, who is the first futurist. And yeah, but wasn't Mayakovsky the one who inspired him to become a futurist back in 1913, yeah. when, when uh, Semenko first listened to Mayakovsky and uh, he was very much uh, inspired by him. And then um, he wrote his first, um, um, his first manifesto, which was completely different from Mayakovsky and the Russian Futurist manifestos. But then already um, after World War, when he started his program of pan-futurism, he very provocatively addressed Mayakovsky to become a pan-futurist or to die. Yeah. And um, then this competition between the two started, but it doesn't mean that even at the very beginning, Semenko just um, copied Mayakovsky because his quiero futurism, quiero futurism, which Searching. comes from the Latin um, quiero, um, searching, um, gives a completely um, different and new definition for art. Art as searching, a never ending process um, of searching and that is what it should be and nothing more. And first of all, not national. And it's different from Russian futurism and very different and very specific, I think. So on the one hand, we always, all the time have this kind of dialogue and competition, but on the other hand, quite specific own development. And one more aspect, um, to delineate between Russian and Ukrainian futurism is not that easy because many, if not most, representatives of Russian futurism were born in Ukraine, come from Ukraine and the others come from, like Mayakovsky, from Georgia. So who is Russian actually in this um, context is a big question. If I can comment on the roots, so I, I know that there's, you know, the story of Simeon Kohl listening to Mayakovsky as a law student and becoming really inspired by it. From what I understand right now, uh, Ukrainian scholars like Anna Bila uh, uh, are connecting Simeon Kohl much more with uh, ego futurists, mm -hmm. with Gnedov, yeah. right? Yeah. Gnedov, whose native language is Ukrainian, mm -hmm and who in the spring of 1913 publishes, I think it's Nibakope, his chapbook. He is the most linguistically, by far, the most linguistically experimental of the ego futurists. His poems are full of Zaum related materials, but as he, his native language is Ukrainian, uh, there's one poem which is half in Ukrainian. Something that I would be really curious to think about is the relationship between Zaum in general mm -hmm. and the highly multinational or multi-ethnic or whatever word you want to use, roots of futurism in the Russian Empire. Because if we look at Zaum as something that is the concept being invented by Kluchonik, so abstract Zaum, right? 
Supposedly, it's at the advice of Burluk. These are people who grew up in a multilingual environment. So, you know, it's a very different linguistic configuration, but it's a linguistic configuration. All of them come from non-monolingual areas. And I think when now thinking about the origin of futurism, when we want to revisit the very idea of Zaum, we could do very well by revisiting it through translingualism, through language mixing, through different linguistic landscapes. I also would like to, to add um, to what Susie said. I think um, this translinguality, yeah, you, you mm -hmm. just perfectly um, stressed it. But also, uh, when I'm thinking about futurism as an international trend, um, basically, if we talk about futurism, it's really hard to say uh, about the uh, borrowings. And it's really hard to distinguish between different poetics. I mean, uh, between Italian, um, Russian and Ukrainian futurism at its early stages, yeah. I would say that they uh, explore and uh, use uh, mostly the same devices. And from this perspective, it's really hard to say um, uh, whether Semenko took a lot from Mayakovsky or from Severianin. Uh, of course, yes, we can trace in different influences and from uh, Elena Guro, for example, yeah. But in general, I would say that like Futurism provides us with scope of um, of devices that are explored by a number of people within different nations. Yeah, what here is national and what is the specifics of the particular uh, futurism is language, of course, because what futurism does, except like the political and social agenda, uh, it turns our attention to language, like um, how should we employ language? Yeah, and that was in this sense, that was a revolution uh, within like the future development of like literary and avant-garde trends. This is the moment when we can come back yeah, to I was gonna the say journal. So, um, futurism is something <laughs> behind us and, um, yeah, what is it? On the one hand, we can um, see here certain continuities um, in terms of internationalism and um, leftist art um, and, and um, uh, programmatics, but on the other hand, um, we don't have what was typical for futurism here, any kind of program, aesthetic program. We have only political terms. So we have communism, mi, za, communism, internationalism, okay. yeah? rationalizatia, and left art. Then we are against national, all national. Yeah? Uh -huh. um, and we are against bourgeois fashion. Um, we are against um, um, tendencies of art without program, amorph, mm. um, and we are against provincialism. What does that even mean? Like, what is this? So, what does this mean in the? Uh, you mean provincialism? This provincialism, as far as I know, was associated with nationalism in the previous yeah. program. So. National meant provincial. It's also we have to um, to view it uh, within the uh, that day's uh, discussions uh, and the way Ukrainian uh, culture was perceived within uh, Russian Empire. The way they perceived Ukrainian culture was very chauvinist. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, like evidence of it. And in this sense, um, this provincialism goes in line with uh, internationalism, yeah? Just to be modern, to be up to date, to be like the main uh, like political and aesthetic journal, you have to fight against like the notion of provincialism in this way. And uh, yeah, in a sense, uh, it also like connects to na national. Uh, I mean, the, uh, their understanding of what national is, but at the same time, it also connects um, with the uh, 19th century uh, Ukrainian political movements and the so-called notion of prosvita, like uh, enlightenment uh, organizations. Mm. 
mm-hmm. uh, that um, uh, cooperated and that had their program uh, or like, pop- like populist movement, Narodniki, da, Narodnichstva mm-hmm. in, in Russian, yes, that actually had um, or viewed their mission as an intelligentsia to enlighten people, mm-hmm. yeah. And in this sense, of course, that was one uh, of of the ways um, uh, like uh, political social movement developed within the whole uh, 19th century, but mostly in the like 60s, 70s when this movement appeared. And uh, basically the first thing that uh, Ukrainian futurists and before Ukrainian modernists did, they were against this type of enlightenment because it was quite provincial, yeah? Mm -hmm. So... But on the other hand, we do have a whole series of very important national topoi in this journal, even in the first number of it. Um, so in, um, um, in uh, Semin Kors um, text, to, which is the first here, we can find um, the uh, Shevchenko as a D national topos, the national poet of Ukraine. Furthermore, in uh, Gio Skurupi's um, contribution, we can find the Dnipro as a very national topic, even more so in the context when the um, electro power, electric power station was um, uh, uh, just built and everybody um, was talking about about um, uh, the problematics that um, some of the most important memory places of Ukraine disappeared the water, under the water. Yeah. And also in this um, late um, 20s, it's the period of political so-called Ukrainization. Mm-hmm. And so this was um, very important to nationalize Ukraine in this context of Soviet politics. Mm-hmm. And we can find some traces of this politics in the journal. So what to do with it? Um, how national is it? Yeah, I would say um, that, um, of course, it's the part of, uh, of national heritage. And But the thing is, uh, what we're basically talking about is the way these different uh, avant-gardist groups perceived national, yeah? Because we have different uh, organizations who claim themselves to be like the right communist one and they stated on the creation of proletarian art. But as all of us know, and you know more about it than I am, um, they discussed about what is proletarian art. It was the discussion about everything, how they perceived uh, proletarian art, how they perceived Marxism, Leninism, what was sociological approach, for example. Uh, as usual, we use it as like singular, but in general, it plural sociological approaches because it was the time when this sociological approach only elaborated and they tried to basically suggest their own view and the same we have as like national what was national of course like all of these uh, groups they employ um, like main national symbols like uh, you, you said Shevchenko, Dnipro that is also the way how you like struggle with the tradition but at the same time you uh, construct this tradition and just a little bit to shift our talk to the notion of uh, like nation building process like later and now we appeal to the spirit i mean within the um, uh, current agenda in russian ukrainian war this period you know is historically named as executed renaissance uh, a so-called executed renaissance yeah and now um, uh, we uh, also appeal to the current uh, events as um, the uh, generation of uh, executed renaissance yeah because basically uh, a lot of uh, talented uh, poets artists writers and and so on they uh, uh, they are, are being killed they killed and being killed with uh, on the war yeah um, uh, and uh, we if, uh, refer to this period as nation uh, Ukrainian nation building yeah uh, and in in this sense of course we are talking about like a lot of processes uh, like that took part in the construction, yeah, I would use this word, yeah, in construction of the very meaning of what is Ukrainian and what is Ukraine. Yeah. yeah. It's very important, of course, to mention this aspect because all the authors we are talking about, mm-hmm. Simon Ko, Giyosh Kurupi and many, many others, um, were killed in 1937. And uh, that is where this 
process of internationalism yeah. and yeah. also nation building in the sense of avant-garde was stopped violently. Mm -hmm.